So you wanna move out of your parents' place. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about five different things that you need to consider before you try and get out of your parents' house. Ow! What's up guys, I'm Esther. Welcome to Adulting with Esther, where we talk about the things that you don't learn in school. And today we're gonna to be talking about the five things that I wish I was able to think about before I moved out of my parents' place. So grab a notebook, grab a coffee, and let's get started. So the first thing that I wish I knew and thought about before I moved out of my parents' place was roommates. There's a lot of pros and cons to roommates, and we're gonna talk about them right now. Some of the pros of having a roommate are that you get to split the bill on literally everything. If you want a two bedroom place that costs a thousand dollars a month, you can afford that place now because two bedrooms, $1,000 a month, means it's $500 per person. It's a great deal. You can afford so much more when you have a roommate. Another great thing is they have social support. Now, right now you're probably thinking, I just gotta get out of this place with my sibling, with my parent, whoever you're living with now, and you need to move out. I guarantee you, having someone to live with is going to be so beneficial to you. Living by yourself, especially for the first time, can be really stressful. I know my first time when I went to school, I didn't hug anybody for like four months and it was really lonely. And I did have a roommate. So make sure you have some social supports in place because moving out for the first time can be a little bit lonely. But let's talk about the cons. So the cons of having a roommate, well, we talked about splitting all those bills and how great that is, but what if they're not any good with money? And what if they're not paying their bills on time? You're gonna have to hassle that person. You're gonna even have to chase them down, wake them up, drive them to the bank. These are things people have to do to get their money back. And unless you have unlimited funds to cover your uh, roommate's bills, you need to be prepared to have that sticky conversation with someone about shared expenses. The same goes for utilities. The same goes for food. Now, another con of having a roommate is you have to share groceries. You don't have to, but you have to share a refrigerator. And when you're sharing a refrigerator, sometimes people are going to eat other people's food. You have no idea how convenient it is to wake up in the morning before you're about to go to class or before you're about to go to work and you wanna have some cereal and you have your cereal there, but you don't have any milk, but there is a jug in the refrigerator with your roommate's initials on it and they'll never notice if you drink a cup or two and the worst is when you come home and you wanted to make a grilled cheese sandwich and then you thought that you had cheese there but then your roommate and all her drunk friends ate all your grilled cheese sandwiches and uh sorry that might have happened to me kitchen sharing is a very tricky thing with roommates i suggest that's something that you figure out how you want to handle with your roommate before you go any further into all of this you might want to go grocery shopping together all the time and heads up it's hard to organize that you might want to just have a grocery fund and one person does the shopping and you use all that shared money. You might want to keep everything separate. I uh, actually got a mini fridge for my room because my roommate kept eating all my food. So you decide what works for you. But there's definitely some major pros and cons of having a roommate. Having a roommate can be extremely beneficial. It's very important that you set up those ground rules and that you do it with someone of whom you can tolerate. All right. Thing number two that you need to think about, renting versus buying. Now, if this is your first place and you're just moving out of your parents, chances are you're not going to be buying. There's a lot of things that go into buying a home. And first off, you need to have established credit. If you don't have established credit, their bank is not going to give you a loan. Now, maybe you are a trust fund kid and you have all the cash. And then my question is, why are you watching this? Chances are you can probably already have your own home. But for people who don't have a trust fund and don't have a credit score, the best thing you can do right now is get an apartment. And that has a lot that goes into it that a lot of people don't think about. So the first thing when you're thinking about getting an apartment is all the fees that are going to go into it. Every time you go to an apartment, there's gonna be either an administrative fee or an application fee. They wanna make sure that you are going to pay your bills on time so they don't have to chase you down. They wanna make sure that you're gonna take care of their place. They are going to ask for references to be like, hey, is so-and-so a good person? Oh, do they party a lot? Are they gonna tear my place apart? You wanna have someone that can speak to your character and probably not your mom, someone else. Um, they're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pay your bills on time. Now, if you don't have a history of paying your bills on time, and I'm not saying because you've paid them late, but because you've never had bills before because you know, you're moving out for the first time, one thing you can do is you can do this thing called a co-signer. A co-signer is where you have someone who has a steady income and a job, typically an adult, 
um, and typically someone in your family like a parent or an older sibling or a grandparent, um, one of those people will actually get on the lease with you and sign. And getting a co-signer can be a scary thing because what they're saying is if the person who's actually living in this apartment doesn't pay their bills on time, you can come to me and I'll take care of it. So whoever this co-signer, if you decide to have one is, needs to know that you are financially responsible. And already, if this is too much for you, if you're thinking I'm not financially responsible, you should not be moving out yet. This is a really big step and it takes a lot of money and a lot of maturity. So just beware. So on top of the administration fee and the application fee, they're going to be doing a background check on you somehow. And like I said, they'll want references. They'll want to see a list of previous employers. If you've never had a job before, again, you're going to need a co-signer or you should get a job because how are you going to be paying rent? If you have pets, something you need to consider is does this apartment allow pets? Not all apartment places uh, allow pets, especially dogs. Most typically I see a limit of one to two pets. And with dogs, it's like no more than 30 pounds. When you're looking for an apartment, what you can expect to see is typically a 12 month lease. That means one full calendar year from when you move in. First thing is going to be a deposit. Now the purpose of a deposit is that is what the landlord is going to hold on to in the event that you trash their place or they're also going to use that with your cleaning fees. When you move out, if you move out, they're going to expect you to clean your place as nice as possible and take everything with you. If you don't do that, they're gonna charge you some massive fee. And I'm talking like $80 an hour, if not more, to clean your place. And all of that is going to come out of your deposit. In addition to your deposit, which can be anywhere from like $500 to $1,000, sometimes even more, they likely will ask for your first month's rent and your last month's rent. So let's say your deposit is $500. Your first month's rent is $1,000. Your last month's rent is $1,000. We're talking $2,500 already, plus your $50 application fee. If you don't have all this money saved up already before you're going apartment hunting, press pause now, go and get a job. You cannot afford to live alone. Something that you need to know about deposits are sometimes you can get them back and sometimes you can't. Really, most of the times, especially if you're moving into an apartment in like a college town, you can expect that the landlord won't give it back to you. Those houses are pretty rough and let's be real, you're probably going to have some parties in there and, you know, put a hole in a wall or burn the carpet or break a window. Those things happen and your landlord's going to have to pay to fix those and they're not going to pay for it out of their own pocket because they didn't break the wall. You did. You're probably not going to get that money back. But don't rely on that you're financially stable because you're ready to move out. Now, something about renting that connects to what we were saying with a roommate is you need to make sure you look at that lease and I'm talking read through it carefully. If your family has a lawyer, talk to it with them, read through it with your parents. They're literally there to help you. I know you're probably trying to like escape them right now, but read through your lease. And if you decided to do a roommate, here's the big thing you need to look for. Is your lease an individual lease? or a joint or shared lease. And I wanna talk about the difference here. An individual lease means if you don't pay your rent, they'll come after you. A joint or a shared lease means if you pay your rent, remember we were talking about a thousand dollar rent, if you pay your $500 and then your roommate does not pay their $500, the landlord is within their right to come after you and the other person for their money. You will both go down. So my biggest advice to you, if this is a first time apartment and you're going to be living with someone that maybe you don't know super well, or someone that you don't know if they can trust their money, get an individual lease. A joint lease will do nothing but probably screw you over. So take care of yourself and get an individual lease. Third thing, location. Location is huge because it can be the reason that your apartment either costs like $900 a month or $2,400 a month. Location also can be the reason that you love your apartment or you hate it. And so I'm going to walk you through a few tools that I used when I went on my apartment search that really helped me to figure it out. The first tool is Zillow. If you go on Zillow, what you can do is you can actually type in the apartment address of that place and you need to scroll all the way down and be able to find this thing called a walkability score. Now, I don't know where you live, but here in the city, walking is huge to me. I don't drive most places. I want to know, can I walk to the store late at night if I'm hungry or do I need to hop in a car and drive for 10 miles? Something you need to consider is 
how much walking do you want to be able to do? And if you're going to have a car, that might not be a big issue, but if you're not going to have a car, that's something you need to focus on. Another thing about location that you really need to consider is the safety of it. The way I like to do this is I get on Trulia and I go and I type in the address of the apartment again and I click on the crime heat map. This shows me based on a scale from, you know, green to red. The more red it is means more crime in that area. And the more green it is means less crime reports. And crime can be anything from, you know, a, a mugging or an assault versus a person being literally shot and killed. Typically places that are higher crime have lower rent. And I'm going to leave you to figure out why. Another thing you need to think about with location is your distance to your parents. Are you trying to move all the way across the country or are you moving like 20 minutes away? Everybody's different with how much they're going to need and miss their parents when they move out. If you're a person who's okay with a quick Skype or a phone call, then go ahead and move miles and miles and miles away. If you're a person who knows you're going to need your parents nearby for their support, then make sure that that's something you consider when you're looking at your apartment search. But wait, there's more. Under the umbrella of transportation, you also need to consider your commute time. If you're going to be working or going to school, you need to think about how long it's going to be taking you to get there. Are you going to have to take public transportation or are you going to have to drive your own car? Or again, are you going to be walking? These are more things that are going to help you think about where you wanna live when you're doing that apartment search. And the last thing, parking. Now, if you don't live in a city, chances are parking comes free or you don't even need to worry about it. But if you do live in more of a metropolis uh, urban area, then you need to be prepared to either pay for parking, get rid of your car, or drive hours and hours on the street to find street parking and parallel park, which heads up, by the way, your bumper is going to be trash after about six months. Number four. Now you need to think about furniture. Something that a lot of people don't think about when they're moving is I'm gonna buy it all when I get there. And sure, do that, but where's the money coming from? I would make sure that you have all your furniture before you move, or at least have it ordered and ready. Another piece of advice is I would be okay with buying it used. Some different places that you can get used furniture from could be like Craigslist, you could go to Goodwill, or you might even have a friend or family member that's willing to give you an old couch that they have in their basement. At this point in time, get over yourself. Your house is not gonna look like a West Elm catalog. You're gonna survive. Enjoy the crappy couch for the $50 that someone gives it to you be thankful. You can always get a slip cover to cover it if you want it to look nicer down the road. If you want to get decent furniture that's a little bit newer and no shame because sometimes used furniture has like bugs and stuff in it, but if you want to get newer furniture, I recommend that you stick to the lower end markets. Ikea is a solid location. Your furniture there will last probably at least three years before it breaks as long as you know you don't weigh 250 pounds plus. My husband like broke um, some of our furniture from Ikea. So, you know, you decide how large you are. But for most people, Ikea is fine, and I would totally recommend it for your starter furniture. You could also check out places like Target or Walmart, but stick to those main places. If you go to a place like West Elm or Pottery Barn, you're gonna break the bank right away, and who cares how pretty your house is gonna be? You're gonna be broke and you won't be able to do anything fun. Something that I would definitely recommend getting from Ikea though is a mattress. You're probably going to not take your mattress from home, but if you're moving out like permanently for good, then by all means, take it if your parents let you. But I think the Ikea mattresses are great. They're like 80 to $200 and they do the job. You know, you can always get one of those like gel toppers for it. That'll make it a little bit more comfortable. But again, you're trying to move out because you want some level of freedom to do it on your own for the first time. So don't break the bank. Get a nicer mattress down the road when you can afford it. Number five. Last thing you need to consider is your budget. On top of all of this, how much can you actually afford? We've already talked about a few different variables that are gonna come in, like whether or not you have a roommate and you're splitting those costs. But other things that are going to add up and stack up need to be considered. And I'm not gonna go into a full budget video here. If you wanna see a budget video later, I will eventually put one up here in a card and you can check it out then. But for now, you just need to think, what can I actually afford? When you are renting, your landlord is going to be checking that cosigner and your background and your income. And what they need to see is that you are not spending more than 30% of your income on your rent. What that means is if you make $1,000 a month, they're not going to let you pay more than $300 a month 
for rent. If your rent is going to be a thousand dollars a month, you need to be prepared to be having an income of about $3,300 per month. And if you don't have that, you can't afford this place. Sorry about you. Within all of this budget, you're also going to need to consider things like food, your utilities, your savings, and anything that you wanna do that's going to be a little bit fun. But the last thing you wanna do is run out of money, get kicked out of your apartment, trash your credit, and then go after crawling back home to mom and live in her basement for the rest of your life. So make sure you have enough money to foot your expenses before you get there. When you're planning out your budget, I recommend that before moving, you actually have two different budgets. One for what you can afford on a monthly basis, and that'll be stuff that reoccurs totally. You can put your bank account on auto pay, easy peasy, you'll be fine. What you also need to have another budget for is your moving budget. And that's things like the gas it takes to get to your new place, renting a moving truck if you need to, being able to get those utilities installed. When places install the utilities in your home or they put it in your name, sometimes they charge an initial fee. I know when you get internet, they have to come out and put the router in and that's usually like a hundred to $200. If I were to go back when I was 18, what would I do again? I would honestly live with my parents just a little bit longer. But what I would do so that I could start having that autonomy within the household that I want and have to follow less of their rules is I'd start paying them rent. If you have a garage in your home or if there is an extra bedroom that maybe is in the basement, see if you can move into that and make it a little bit different. Start buying some of your own groceries. The worst part about living at home with your parents is for the longest time they want to parent you and you have to teach them, hey, I'm an adult and I need to you know, establish my own authority here. If you do that, things will definitely be better. What I did is I went to college and I took out a bunch of student loans and I lived in a dorm for a year, which is freaky expensive. Then I went and got an apartment, which I thought was saving money, but I actually had to take out extra student loans to pay for it. I even had a job, but it just wasn't enough money. So now here I am with like $120,000 in student loans and I did move out when I was young and I've been independent since I was 18 years old. And I promise you compared to even my friends when I was 18 years old, I was ready for life and they were still children. If I could go back and save a couple thousand dollars by living with my parents for another year or two, I'd highly recommend it. If you don't have a steady income that you can rely on to pay for your rent, wait. Maybe move out when you're a junior or a senior. Consider who your roommate's gonna be and do your best to really figure out, can I afford this? There are really great apartments you can find if you don't have a lot of money that are made for people with lower incomes. Um, you can find those on websites when you Google things like uh, income restricted housing or rental caps. A lot of places, especially in the city, have nice, nice apartments that they can't charge more than a certain amount for because they need to be able to give housing to people with lower incomes like students and single parent families. So look for that information while you're out there and really, do your best to make sure you have enough money before you go and you rent your first place because it is something that can change the rest of your life for better or for worse. Okay, bye guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you got value out of this video, please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and click subscribe.